Good morning. You must have seen this. Every day you see yourself in a mirror. There's this big fairy tale, Snow White, where there is this unforgettable scene. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of them all? And then to which the mirror replies, oh queen, you are the fairest one here, but Snow White is a thousand times more fairer than you. Okay. So consider this, a mirror which you see every day is the original selfie machine, right? It takes light from you and gives you back a selfie. And of course, we have new things to give us selfies. But a mirror is a thing. A mirror is passive, right? And a mirror, uh, you know, just gives you a direct reflection of what you see, what you are. Can we animate mirrors? Can a mirror talk to you like this? Can a mirror interact with you? Can a mirror understand you? Can a mirror learn about you? Can it sort of reason and then sort of interact with you and connect you to the world and tell you about other things in the world? So we are entering an age where mirrors and things are becoming cognitive. So what I'm going to be talking about today is how do you add all these pieces together? How do you take things, you know, attach what I just talked about, interactivity, understanding, learning, and reasoning, and, uh, you know, what we call cognitive or other companies and, you know, the uh, uh, society calls artificial intelligence, and then interact with you. So that's, uh, that's what I want to talk about. But I want to talk about in a specific type of things, mirrors. But, you know, what I want you to think about is, uh, you know, what if we could do this to all the things around us? So, but before we do that, um, before we see how to create this magic, let's look at the internet itself. The internet has grown a lot because of optical fibers that sort of span our earth. We have a network of fibers and optical communication, and there it's again uh, light that is modulated, that is turned on and off, that sends signals all through. We can also take light and modulate it and send it through free space. You're seeing this projector project things. If you turn it on and off, you can actually encode and transmit uh, bits on it. You can make an, a wireless internet out of optics. So in fact, uh, with uh, colleagues at RPI and UNR, we, we try to do that. And not only just from a point to point, but even when two objects are moving related to each other, like you know, to drones or to airplanes or to spaceships, we can actually communicate uh, through optics at a very high rate, at a very high bit rate, right? So uh, the wired, the wireless internet has now gone beyond people. You have the mobile phones. Now it's starting to touch things. Now, uh, and uh, we are entering the age of the internet of things. And, uh, you know, there are 9 billion people. There are going to be uh, trillions of things. So there's a lot to uh, touch. But, you know, there's more than this. In parallel, there's been advances in technology where just what I talked about, right? The, uh, in the computer science world, we're moving away from compute to data. And, uh, and computers are moving from being programmed to learning computers and learning from the data. If you just take the human analogy that I show here, so we take in information through our different senses, our eyes, our ears, our senses, our touch, and so on. Right? And then we process them, right? we understand, we interact with the world, we understand, we reason, we learn, and we interact, and then we do something about it, right? and we respond. So in, uh, what is happening is that uh, computers are being built which do similar things. So how, what about if you take things, connect them via the internet, and then attach them to this capability? What is the art of the possible? Let's look at, again, mirrors and images and selfies. So let's talk about mirrors. I'm going to take you through a journey of uh, different examples of uh, how you can sort of make a mirror come alive and do very interesting things. So let's look at uh, sustainable energy. Uh, if you want to make solar energy cheaper than coal, what do you have to do? You have to make that device much more efficient. So one way of doing that is to look at the cost of uh, the solar energy converter and to look at the cost of a mirror. If I can take light and then concentrate it onto an expensive device, I can raise the productivity of the device. So that is one of the 
uh, projects that our colleagues at IBM Research in Zurich and our Yorktown labs did, trying to concentrate light, uh, you know, uh, thousands of times, uh, almost 2,000 times concentration. Of course, you have to cool this. So we used ideas from data center cooling technologies to be able to, you know, cool using a MEMS technology right integrated at the chip level. It turned out that this technology did not fall in cost as fast as we want, and you know the the uh, you know imperative of climate change is much faster. So we are doing take two. We are looking at something that's already falling in cost, that is solar panels, and then putting mirrors around them, and then we are attaching uh, the Internet of Things to it, and we are uh, adding artificial intelligence. We are looking at the sky, taking selfies of the sky. We are processing information. We understand how much dust is there on a panel. We can add light and then uh, you know, produce more electricity. So what is happening is the mirror is becoming intelligent to, to determine how much light I uh, deliver to a panel in, in, the, in the optimal way, and that can create more energy. Right? And uh, what we see is that this can drive uh, energy yields up. You can get more out of the same solar panel. And then uh, you can reduce the cost or amortize cost. Think about if I have a plane that is running at 14, 15% uh, utilization versus uh, double that level. You can, you know, sort of if you double the utilization or uh, yield, you can halve the costs, right? So, so that's uh, an example of what we're doing with mirrors and solar. So let's uh, turn from mirrors to the images that they create, okay? And I talked to you about the mirror being the original selfie machine. We also heard about selfies recently. Right, and uh, we are in the age of selfies, actually. So, you know, uh, today people buy cameras uh, based on the uh, capabilities of its imaging uh, technology. And all the uh, new ads that you're seeing is how good a camera can take selfies, whether it can throw a flash at you, interesting. Now we're also moving from the age of selfies to the age of dronies, where, uh, you know, you send a drone and that can capture a selfie, you know, like it's doing for this family here. Right, and, and you can also start having selfies of your, uh, of your life all the time, right? Uh, and this is an example of putting a GoPro camera on a dog, right? Or when you're doing adventurous things, such as flying that aircraft. Now, you can also take selfies of other things. Just like you think of taking a selfie of yourself, you can take the selfie of the Earth by sending satellites. Okay, well, the satellites are very expensive, but what's happening is uh, now people are um, sort of tagging on small or nano satellites along with uh, normal satellite launches and doing, uh, you know, hundreds of them. So soon the Earth is going to get covered with thousands and, you know, very soon in a decade, perhaps millions of nano satellites, each of them taking a selfie of the Earth. And you can put that together and see a picture of the Earth, um, you know, every day or even at a, um, at a faster resolution. Every part of the Earth every day or even faster. So think about it, just like you have, you're taking a selfie of yourself all the time, you have a selfie of the earth. What can you do with that? You can actually transform a number of industries such as agriculture. So one of the projects that we've done, this was done in the United States with Gallo Wineries, was to take a combination of satellite imagery and then combine it with local weather information to give precision information about, you know, how much water to use. Similarly, you can give guidance about you know, how much fertilizer to use, how to manage your production. In India, one of the uh, challenges to doubling farmers' income is that productivity is very low. We want to be part of uh, doing this for India, and, uh, you know, you can do this with selfies. So, for example, uh, with the data that is publicly available today, you can uh, go from a world scale to a national scale to a state scale, all the way down to farm scale, and you can look at what is the uh, you know, nature of vegetation that is growing and how is that progressing. And if you analyze that data, you can and add intelligence to that, and you can now deliver that to your farmer's mobile. And by the way, like I showed you in the earlier slide, a farmer can take a selfie of, uh, you know, of their plants or their canopies and so on. And uh, you know, just like the human integrates all this information, you can integrate all this information and then give back actionable insights uh, that can double productivity or more, right? So, so that was agriculture. Now coming back to mirrors and selfies together, can I put them together? You know the original example that I gave you? So think of um, a mirror in a jewelry store. Today the jewelry store experience is very interesting. You go 
and you try on several things, right? Um, or the other people might be waiting for you to try on several things. And then, um, uh, you know, you, you, it's a very complex decision process. So what we can do is, suppose I had a magic mirror that sort of understands you and gives you options for trying on different uh, types of things. And it automatically fits. You can uh, also shop with somebody else. And, um, you know, you can try different things on. And this is not just for jewelry. Uh, we have a project around cognitive fashion to put uh, various kinds of uh, things that, um, you know, using images, using selfies, using uh, a personalization of how things fit to you. Right? So this is an example of a cognitive environment which sort of interacts with you closely. Now you can t take this home. You can take the mirror home. Now you can take the mirror home and then that mirror um, along with an understanding of other things around you. So it's an interaction between a human and a thing, the mirror, and uh, you know, a cataloging of the other things and uh, the mirror knows what other things you have like what's there in your wardrobe. And over time, the mirror understands you. The mirror knows the true you. This is my daughter when she was younger. And, uh, and it can really give you the recommendations that you need. Right? So we are entering this world in which mirrors are getting animated. Mirrors are getting a life of their own. Things are getting a life of their own powered by cognitive technologies. And then you can go back and stand in front of your mirror and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? Thank you.